Hello, this is Father David, here with day 20 of the Nativity Fast 2023. We have reached our halfway point in our Christmas Lenten journey. And uh, today's Gospel reading, we're going to be continuing just uh, actually repeating the final verse. Uh, we're picking right back up after the uh, end of yesterday's Gospel reading, or the Gospel reading about uh, giving to Caesar that which is Caesar and to God that which is God's uh, from last Friday, uh, excuse me. And we pick up here, we're back in the weekdays, we're out of the weekend, so we go into the weekday readings, which again tend to go more or less sequentially. Uh, starting in verse 27, Then came to him some of the men of the Sadducees, those who say, There is no resurrection. Just a note, these are the people that are opposed within the Jewish leaders to the, the Pharisees uh, who do say that there is a resurrection from the dead. In this, of course, they are correct. The Pharisees are. Uh, but the Sadducees um, say that there is no resurrection testified to in the law of Moses. And they asked him, teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother should die, and he has a wife without children, let his brother take his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, they're going to tell him a story. There were seven brothers. The first married and died without children. The second married his wife and the second married his wife and died without children. And the third one married her again. And likewise, the seven of them, and they died leaving no children. Now, just a bit of a side note here also. This is really obviously a, uh, an allusion to the story of Tobit in the Old Testament. Now, this is one of those books that uh, within Protestant Old Testaments, uh, they don't use the manuscripts that uh, are what's called the Septuagint, the Greek, primarily Greek manuscripts of uh, the Old Testament in which these are uh, included. Uh, the fuller, uh, what we Orthodox would call the fuller, the full Orthodox uh uh, Old Testament canon, but uh, you know, so they are they are riffing off of this. Sometimes it's helpful to say, as we'll see again uh, later on down in this uh, passage, that you know, sometimes when people will say that you know the traditions that the Orthodox have, they're not found in the Scripture, or where do you get them? It's like, well, they are biblical, they are scriptural. You just maybe have to dig for them or or understand where to see them. So this is from Tobit. Um, and then they ask the question, you know, they, they take this known uh, factor and then they say, uh, therefore, at the resurrection, so now we know they're being disingenuous because they don't believe actually in the resurrection of the dead, uh, which one of them, to which one of them will she be a wife? For seven of them married her. And Jesus said to them, the sons of this world marry women and women are given to men in marriage bit of a commentary there on the tradition, the understanding uh, within scripture through Christ Jesus himself of the nature of marriage. Uh, the men of the, the sons of this world marry women. The women are given to men in marriage. Um, but those who are worthy of the other world and the resurrection from the dead neither take women in marriage nor are women given to marriage in marriage to them. Uh, in another gospel, it says they become like the angels in heaven and are neither married nor given in marriage. For they cannot die again because they are like angels. And they are sons of God because they are sons of the resurrection. Of course, this doesn't mean that they are themselves angels. It's a bit of bad theology that gets passed down. God, you know, when someone dies, a, a well-meaning person may say something to the effect of God needed another angel in heaven and that's i think every priest should cringe a bit when they when they hear this but uh of course people mean well but people don't become angels however we are like them in the sense that our bodies are no longer uh you know that we call them the bodiless hosts and our bodies will be transformed transfigured renewed made uh you know light and perfect and spiritual whatever that actually means um, because they are sons of the resurrection. Now, concerning the resurrection of the dead, Christ continues, and he, by the way, is more in the school, of course, of the Pharisees, 
In fact, there's a book called Jesus the Pharisee a while back. Um, that's the school of rabbinic uh, uh, philosophy that he comes from. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, even Moses pointed it out, for he referred to it at the bush, the burning bush, right? Saying, the Lord God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now, in the Greek manuscripts, you'll read uh, where he says, I am, where the, where the Lord God, the Father of Jesus Christ, reveals himself saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him or in him. And this is, uh, you know, he didn't say I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when they were alive. But now that they're dead, well, there's not much that can be done. And, you know, um, no, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live in him. And so what it means to be in Christ is that, you know, St. Paul says at the end of Romans 8, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall life or death or height, width, breadth or any other created thing separate us from the love of God? No, of course not. We remain in Christ and as such, we are not dead, but we are alive. And uh, we are kept alive by the memory of God. This is why Orthodox Christians say memory eternal whenever we and we cross ourselves whenever someone dies, uh, that this is, um, we, we affirm what Christ is saying here, that he is the God of the living and the God of the dead, but that not even the dead are really dead, that the souls of the righteous departed are uh, in the hands of God, as we read in the wisdom of Sirach, or the wisdom of Solomon, rather. Um, and then just to finish off, and some of the men of the scribes answered, saying to him, Teacher, you have well said, disingenuously, of course, still. Um, and they did not dare again to question him concerning anything. At least they had the sense to do that, even though they're trying to save face with what they'd said. And he said to them, How can the scribes say concerning the Christ that he is the son of David? And yet David said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put down your enemies under your feet. If therefore David calls him my Lord, how then can he be his son? So Christ says, well, <clears throat> you know, in a sense, if you're going to spar over the meaning of scripture and we're going to debate scripture, which is what, of course, one would hope that the uh, religious leaders uh, would, would engage in. Uh, he says, uh, in a sense, riddle me this, you know. Uh, and of course, pointing to the fact that, uh, you know, both, there is both the, the, the Messiah, the great mystery, which no one could really answer because he's the walking, talking, incarnate, enfleshed son and word of God walking around. They don't know this, of course, but he says, if David calls the Messiah, the Christ, Lord, how can he also be? the son of David, as was understood, the son of David. That was a, a, a title of the anointed one that was to come, the promised deliverer. And of course, this is, you know, for us, we have this sense that, you know, our God has reconciled God and man, heaven and earth in his own person. He has reharmonized uh, those two um broken and fractured uh, entities that, uh, you know, now the created creation has a way back home to the one who is uncreated, the father, the son, and the, with his son and Holy Spirit, um, that we can go home, that we can be present, that we can uh, be reconciled to our God. And that in him, we will never die if we are his. We will never die, but we will always live in his presence, in his memory, and through his eternal memory, we ourselves will be uh, eternally alive. So the Lord God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.